Hey y'all, I want to welcome you to the Penny Pinching Prepper channel. I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper. Guys, today is part two. Um, how to make the um, fat fire putty. Alright, if you saw the first video, it gives you a list of stuff that you need, what makes the product good, all that kind of stuff. There'll be a link in the description box below. To see that video, if you haven't, I recommend you go and see it. Um, guys, if this video interests you at all, or you're a longtime loyal follower, please do me a favor, get down there, like the, like the video, give me that thumbs up, get the algorithms moving for me, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, if you're new, stick by, check out the video, if you like it, do me a favor and subscribe. I do projects like this periodically from time to time. Uh, it's a way to make something that's already out there on the market or maybe something that's not on the market. Um, if it is on the market, I always try to figure out a way to make it better for cheaper. So without further ado, let's get into this a little bit, guys. <clears throat> so to start off, you're going to need to make some fat wood shavings. All right. I did link a video, or not a video, I did link uh, to a place where you can buy the shavings. I only found one place that had real fat wood shavings. I'm not saying it's the only place, but I will again link it in this uh, video. It's also linked in the other one. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to rearrange this camera so you guys can see what I'm doing and what I'm talking about a little bit better, and then we'll get into things. All right, so I already got myself ahead a little bit and made a bunch of fat food shavings. I showed it in the last video. This is what it looks like. It's super fine. All right, there's no splinters or anything like that. You can run your fingers through there and not worry about getting, you know, a splinter in your finger or anything. And the way we do this is we take a, a piece of fat wood. Guys, I find my fat wood at Walmart. Um, it's kind of surprising, but I do. It comes in a box. Looks kind of like this. All right, and uh, really good stuff. All right. There's different qualities in the box. You know, some are really, really good. Some are, you know, fair, but it, it's all fat wood. All right, so... You're going to need a box knife, one like this, one that takes the, the angled blades. They're super stiff, they're hard, and they work the best for this project, all right? And all you're going to do... Now, before I get into this, I've had people talk about my, my techniques with blades and stuff like that, and I've been working with blades for a long time, and once you get to a certain point, the whole rules of blades go out the door, all right? If you're not to that point... Maybe take some precautions, like put a glove on the hand that you'll be holding the fat wood, or, you know, figure out a different way to do this, but this is how I do it, all right? I just take the fat wood, I take the blade, I put my thumb as close to the blade as I possibly can. This gives me great leverage, keeps the blade from twisting and everything else, and allows me to protect my finger a little bit. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna put the blade straight up against it and you're going to scrape down all right and now you can go up and down to do it all right but only do that if you've had some practice you know what you're doing but basically you're just going to scrape it that's it just keep scraping it's a little bit loud it's a little bit noisy and it takes a little bit of time There's just a couple of seconds, and you can see that it actually adds up pretty fast, pretty decently. And this is me doing it from a, a weird stance, because technically I should be standing up instead of sitting down to do this, so I get over it and get better pressure. <laughs> All right, but you can see that by just merely scraping that with your blade...
you get these nice little shavings, all right? And the reason we're scraping instead of peeling is we need it to be as fine as possible, as fluffy as possible. You don't want any splinters, anything that's going to poke your fingers or anything like that, all right? So I'm not going to keep going on with that. I think you guys got the idea of how to do that. Now, how much fat would you want? depends on the containers you're going to put it in and how many containers you're going to make. I'm going to put them in little containers like this eventually. But to start off, you need a big disposable container of some sort like this. All right. But you want to pack the container that you're going to put it in as tight as you possibly can. Just pack this fat wood in there as tight as you can. This is how you're going to measure how much fat wood you need. Okay. So how many containers you plan on doing, whatever, you need to pack each and every one of them super tight with the fat wood, all right? And then you'll dump it into these uh, into this container here and then go to the next step, all right? And the next step is making my beeswax waterproofing compound. Uh, I have a video on that if you want to go and check it out. Go search for it in my uh, my videos. It's just, it's just simply called Beeswax Waterproofing Compound video, okay? Now, that stuff is great if you need to waterproof leather, canvas, wood, metal. It does it all. It's really good stuff. Um, not only does it protect... But certain things like leather, wood, when you start rubbing that stuff on, it'll actually also clean. Same with the metal. It'll clean it up. Maybe not perfect, but it will definitely help. All right. So what we need to start making that is a scale and some sort of a pot. Now you can use uh, an old metal coffee tin to do this on, whatever, but it, it needs to be something that you can heat up, get a mess, and you're not worried about ever using again, okay? Or at least using for food. So that's why the, the coffee tin might come in in, ha uh, in handy, all right? So what we're gonna do is the recipe for the fat wood, or the, the beeswax waterproofing compound is one pound beeswax, to one cup um, turpentine and one cup boiled linseed oil. We're actually going to make it a little bit smaller so I don't have too much left over. You guys can make it as big or as small as you want just by dividing or multiplying the recipe, okay? Um, whatever you have left that you don't use, go ahead and keep because like I said, it's a great waterproofing compound. All right. So we're actually only going to do half a pound today of beeswax. We're going to half it because we don't, I, I already have a bunch. I don't need a whole lot more stuff like that. So we're going to half it. So halving it will be one half pound beeswax, one half cup turpentine, one half cup boiled linseed oil. The way you do it is go ahead and just measure out your beeswax. Guys, I like these little pellets. They work way better than the blocks. The blocks are great if you're going to rub beeswax directly on something, but if you're going to melt your beeswax down, get these beads. They work great. So, half a pound is 8 ounces. 16 ounces to a pound. 28 grams to an ounce. Oh, no, we want eight, not, not a quarter pound. We want, we want a half pound. So, there we go. There's our half pound. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and shut this video off for a little bit. I'm going to put this on a stove, and you can do it outside if you feel more secure about doing it outside. Um, kind of actually recommend it because of the fumes, but I'm in an open room that's shut off from the, the rest of the world. Um, but I got windows open, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. But I'm going to shut the video off for a second. I'm going to slowly, very slowly heat this up and melt it all the way down. Just the beeswax, all right, guys? We'll get back to the rest of it in a second.
All right, so when you get it all melted down, it'll look something, you know, nice and golden like that, unless you have the white beeswax, but I recommend the yellow beeswax. It hasn't been filtered to death and, uh, you know, still has some nutrients in it, so it can also double as an emergency nutrients if ever it comes to it. Um, but once you get it like that, go ahead and get your little, your little half measuring cup, all right? And we're going to put, like I said, a half cup of uh, turpentine. Now, remember, guys, that you need to have the, the flame off and it away from a flame when you go to do this. Because now you're working with flammable products here. So there's that half cup of the turpentine. A half a cup of the boiled linseed oil. I always want to say linseed oil, but I know it's linseed oil. It's one of those problems I have, I guess. I'm gonna add that in. Then once it's all added in and, and looking good, then we're gonna go ahead and stir it up. As you can see, it, it kind of wanted to coagulate a little bit, so we wanna mix it up to where it remelts and everything gets mixed together really, really good, guys. All right. Next comes the fun project, or the fun part. Now, you might want to put on some rubber gloves for this part. You might want to get a putty knife or something. Because we need to mix this into the fatwood shavings really, really good. All right. So, then what we'll do next is we're going to pour this in. All right. And you just want to cover it. You just want to get a nice coating over this stuff. All right. You don't want to overdo it too much. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like we could use a little bit more. Possibly. Yeah. We can use a little bit more. All right. You're just trying to get it. To where there's enough putty to hold it all together or enough of the compound to hold it together real nice saturate it real good you don't want to put too much in it because you put too much in it and it thins out the uh the fat wood right so that looks like it's going to do it you can see there's a, a nice little bit sitting down there in the corner still you can see this is all good and saturated so we're just going to keep mixing it up i'm going to finish mixing it up real good guys and i'll get back to you in a moment all right the other thing i forgot to tell you is if you have any leftover like i do all right immediately pour it into some sort of a tin that you uh are all right holding on to um for your uh your waterproofing compound like i said don't don't waste it don't overkill the, as you can see, I went ahead and it's going to take a little time to dry guys, but you can see I, I smashed it down below. It's got a thin little teeny tiny layer over the top of the, uh, the compound, the liquid that we just made. All right. And, uh, that's going to take some time to dry. All right. <laughs> and coagulate but on top of that even after it's dried and coagulate you need to let it sit overnight it needs to sit out for about 12 hours all right maybe even a little bit longer you know you, you can tell by how the the putty feels to you so occasionally go in and just kind of feel it and see if it has that consistency that you would look for in putty all right so guys this is this is basically the end of it right here all right, and uh, once that gets done and it's sat out and everything, then you can put it into your container, kind of like I have here, all right? And uh, if you give me all just a short second, I'll show you how this stuff works. All right, so I got myself a little something out here. Now, guys, this will take a fair CM rod. You can see that in the last video that I did, uh, part one to this. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to bother, but I am going to show you. All right. As you can see, it's like a paste. It sticks like a paste. 
All right, you see how that's sticking to my finger real good? It's pliable, you can shape it, you can roll it in a ball, whatever you wanna do. All right. Now this is, this is kind of a big chunk here. I'm gonna take half of that off, all right? Get it down to about the size of a marble. Um, the size of a marble I have found is plenty, plenty for this stuff, all right? Um, now, if you crack it open and, and uh, expose those uh, fibers, it lights up easier than what you saw there. It lights up really easy. In fact, if you're going to use a ferro rod, you got to kind of crack it open and expose the fi uh, fibers a little bit. But guys, this is this is basically it, and you you see the flame on that thing. All right, it gets pretty darn hot. It gets pretty darn big, and it lasts for a super long time. Um, you can put it on a stick because you saw how sticky it was and use it as a match uh, to light other things up. Uh, you know, this stuff will float on water and light. I still don't understand the point of that. I don't think anybody's going to be making a fire in a puddle, but this stuff will float on water and light on fire at the same time. Uh, in a pinch, if you're out in the wilderness and all you have is your fire putty, um, your fat fire putty, uh, you can still use it to, well, you know, waterproof your gloves or something like that. Uh, so this stuff, it, it's multi-person or multi-faceted. I mean, you can use it in many different ways for, you know, different ways to start fires, like I said, for waterproofing, yada, 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 yada. But great little project, guys. Really simple, really easy, works really good. I mean, look at the flame on this thing, all right? Great flame. And you still got plenty of burn time. Um, I, I haven't actually timed it yet, but I'm assuming a ball like this is going to go for anywhere from five to seven minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Um, uh, if it starts to die down a little bit, all you got to do is get in there and and crack it open a little bit and uh, it will uh, you know get back to the middle and start burning a little bit better so guys without making this video too long too annoying too whatever guys that's the the fat fire putty great stuff I recommend you make some throw it in your your bug out kit your your backpacking kit whatever uh have fun with it enjoy the project i really hope you do if you like what you saw give me a thumbs up if you're new and you seem like i'm a channel worth having around do me a favor subscribe guys <clears throat> i just really want to say thank you all for stopping by and and checking this out and remember god's good and god bless